In today's episode, we put holographics in the Imagination Forge. Holographics. It's a technology so popularized by movies just like flying cars. But do they really exist in the year 2014? Yes, they actually do. But just in universities and research and development labs. You see, over the last 60 or so years, holographic technology has developed from three major groups. Optical physicists, artists, and entrepreneurs trying to make some cash. Anybody that's ever played modern video games or has even seen them knows that 3D data can just look perfect. It can be incredibly detailed, it can be very realistic, whatever the artist is going for. Well, if our data is in three dimensions, how come our best display technology is only two-dimensional? When thinking about building holograms, you have to kind of adopt a mental model based on how we know current display technology works. So this is a field of pixels, as most of you know. It has an X dimension and a Y dimension. Those two dimensions basically make up the reason I call it a two-dimensional display. If we add a Z dimension to get a three-dimensional display, that would be a hologram. But in terms of how we talk about it, if we add a Z dimension, it's not a hologram, it's a volume at that point. And the pixels are not pixels anymore, they're voxels, okay? And the reason I mention that is because when you're Google searching about holograms, when you're talking to professionals about holograms, the, the research has been done and tagged to terms like volumetric rendering, volume viewers, volume, volumetric displays, things like that. So maybe that'll help you in your quest to uh, find out more about holograms. Okay, so here are a couple of my favorite attempts at actual holographic technology that does exist. The first idea uses a special array of lasers that intersect in midair to ionize the air and generate light as voxels. This is called laser plasma emission technology and it is a damn cool idea. The lasers ionize patterns in the air so fast that our eyes can't detect the refresh rate and we perceive images and shapes. One of my professors actually saw this thing demonstrated at a conference and he said it was so ear piercingly loud that it reminded him of what it would be like to take a hundred microwaves and shove them full of aluminum foil and turn them all on at the same time. It's also really dangerous. The lasers are high energy and they could burn you in an instant if you got your hand within the, the field of view of the, the actual emission. So it's dangerous, but it actually generates a real hologram. So in my opinion, I think if you experimented with various gases, different types of lasers, you might be able to get the energy level down, meaning you could find a gas and a laser pairing that wouldn't necessarily require so much energy to ionize and create a voxel in the air. That would be an advantage of something that could come out of the research, as well as maybe trying out some different gases that could generate different uh, colors possibly. Definitely inert, harmless gases, but uh, I think this is a good path and probably gonna, we'll probably see a lot more development in this area later on. All right, so in my opinion, the next example will probably evolve into the first somewhat mainstream volume display for holograms. It uses what I'm calling frequency sync projection mapping. Basically, it's a 2D screen that mechanically flaps up and down or side to side or in a circle really fast so that it becomes a blur to you and me. The effect uses a phenomenon of our eyes called persistence of vision. Next, projected pixels are mapped to the exact time that the 2D screen hits the 3D position, basically creating a voxel. This illusion can also be created by spinning LED lights or LCD screens and triggering them in sync with their required voxel position. I can imagine actually trying to reach out and point at one of these screens and having the thing take my hand off, but it is a possible hologram solution. Since we can't just walk into Best Buy or go on Newegg and buy a holographic display, we have to resort to building them. So I'm going to give you an overview on how to build a system like this behind me. This is called the Mirage and it's based on projection reflection. Uh, it's the same illusion that you might have heard of called Pepper's Ghost. Well anyway, the whole point of this is to use inexpensive materials and create an impressive volume display. The, an, the tutorial I'm going to go through is just an overview. There'll be annotations that you can click on that will actually give you more detailed information about how to do the various steps. So the cool thing about this type of display 
is it's actually a volume viewer in that it allows you to see multiple views with one screen. So if you look down below, you see some reflections, sources coming up and hitting this plexiglass, and then we're seeing what the plexiglass is reflecting from below here. So there's actually a front, back, left and right reflection. So that means you could put this thing out in the middle of an audience and they could stand around it or walk around it and based on where they're, where they're standing, they're gonna see the front, back, left or right of, of whatever your subject matter is. The interface for this, I've gotten a little fancy on. I'm using a Elite Motion controller. You could use a keyboard and mouse or you don't even need an interface. You could just use a video source. But the Elite Motion recognizes my fingertips and allows me to rotate the model around. So I'll do that for you. So based on wherever I move my fingers in some sort of fashion, it's going to rotate the 3D model and allow us to view it. It takes a little bit of practice. Gestural controls or human-computer interaction, that's, a, that's another topic for another day. I'm really going to focus on how to build this, this system here behind me. Let's get started. To build a Mirage, the first thing you need to do is build the reflector. It's basically the shape of a pyramid with the top cut off. The four sides are all at 45 degree angles to the base, and this can be scaled to just about any size you want. So this one is small, this is meant for like a tablet. You can do one on a smartphone depending on how big the screen is. The four sides themselves, they, they look like this, and they have to be cut at certain dimensions here and here, and a certain angle here to make sure that it's bent at a 45 degree angle when you actually get it all uh, connected up together. Um, like I said, the scale can be just about anything based on the display you have, from this all the way up to something like this. So if you want to know the math behind actually how to build four of these, or cut four of these out in the proper dimensions, just click on this annotation here and I'll go through all the math. All right, so the software I'm using with the Mirage is Unity. So if I press play here, you can see the result. This is what we're using to reflect. So the Mirage would sit here in the middle and reflect these various views. The way we achieve that is with this camera system that we've set up here. It's pretty complex, but uh, it works pretty well. So these are real-time views you're seeing. If you want to get an in-depth perspective on how this Unity scene works, you can click this annotation here, and I made a video about how the, all these kind of work together. I should mention Unity you can download for free, and you can get this up and running and try it out yourself. The package that, or the setup I made here, uses the Leap Motion controller package, and uh, it won't matter if you don't have that. If you do have it, it'll work right away. But if you don't, and you just and you run the app, it won't move on you. But uh, you can uh, at least get this up and running and try it out. Again, this isn't actually a hologram. It doesn't actually give us a real volume of voxels, but uh, it does give us an illusion using Pepper's Ghost, and uh, we can use that to our advantage. I've had people ask me about different heights, different maybe curve shaped reflectors, you can do that. It just takes some different things you're going to do in Unity. Something else, if you want to dumb it down, make it easier on yourself, use video. You don't have to use a way, you don't have to use Unity. You don't have to use a real-time software. In the description below is also an example in After Effects to render video in the same shape or even a Photoshop template if you just want to get to just have images. So the Mirage really represents kind of a low-hanging fruit in, in the area of holographic displays by using Pepper's Ghost and really inexpensive materials. In 2014, I hope you kind of gathered, we don't really have the capability to have Tony Stark style holograms that are ubiquitous, like our, our display technology we use now is kind of trying to be. But uh, you know, in the next 10 years, I'll say, maybe we'll see that holy grail holographic technology that comes about. I would keep an eye on conferences like SIGGRAPH, which is a graphics conference, CES, also YouTube. There's all kinds of things that come out of, comes on YouTube that pretty much goes under the radar and is actually pretty novel stuff. And uh, the, it's real research too. You know, Even if they don't have an elaborate lab, it's still pretty impressive stuff. Thank you for joining me. I uh, have lots of stuff for you ahead. The Imagination Forge is just getting warmed up. Click that subscribe button to be sure you don't miss what's coming next week.